Um, so on the slide, we have the steps to take when looking at producing a threat model. And traditionally, you would have five steps. Um, we've got six on there because that's where we, we've just gone that little extra bit, uh, but we'll get onto that in a second. So the traditional five steps, you'd initially start with um, an angle of looking at who's attacking me, who's the threat actor, who am I concerned about? Or you would look at what is likely to be attacked? What are my assets? What are my crown jewels? Um, you know, what do I really need to protect to make sure that if we suffer a cyber attack, you know, we can continue, we can resolve it quickly. And then from these two uh, points, you'd look to build out those threat scenarios. And from there, the model tends to just grow and grow. And in my experience, often the threat model becomes really quite large, too big, uh, to be honest with you. People tend to just look at the summary, maybe look at some of the priority actions that uh, it's highlighted, uh, and then it kind of gets shelved and it might be brought back out in 12 months time for the annual sort of check or the audit or, or whatever it might be. Um, so to help with this, uh, when we were asked to produce a threat model for the oil and gas sector, we decided to make it as easy as to consume as possible and also have it focus on the so what question. Um, what can I do about these threats identified in a way that, again, easy to consume and easy to action and easy to implement. Um, so this is where the additional sixth step come in that we've added, and that's creating that monitor attack heat map on the back of the threat model. Um, so in order to get to that stage and to build that threat map, we, um, we decided to build the model using three key areas um, and those three key areas we assigned different threat levels to um, and, and it, it's straightforward enough to do anyone can do it um, firstly basically we identify the baseline threats and we, we assign these baseline threats as a low threat then uh, we next looked at these threat scenarios and we assign those as your medium threats uh, and then finally we're using open source intelligence your OSINT so we're looking at bringing in the ever-changing threat landscape and, and we assign this a high threat level. So, um, so those three aspects are, are key. So going back to the baseline, basically what we've done with our tool, so we built the tool which pulls down everything from MITRE and you select in the tool, you know, your sector. So a, a little side note here, this isn't just, you know, you can use this for oil and gas, you can use it for finance, you can use it for govern, uh, government, defence, aerospace, whatever sector. Um, you select the sector you want and it will pull down all those identified threat actors that are known to have attacked that sector in the past and it pulls down all their TTPs that they are known to have used. Um, then next stage we create those threat scenarios covering both the IT and OT networks for oil and gas um, and in doing so, we also identify and pull out the TTPs for, for those as well. So you can probably see where this is going with the OSINT. We then also gathered in all the OSINT, so creating this model, which we went back about 12 months um, to give us the best coverage. Uh, and essentially, from all the campaigns and attacks that we saw uh, focus on the sector, we pulled out again the TTPs. So what you've got there is the three different levels of threats with overlapping TTP details. Um, so the threat model has shrunk considerably. Rather than having pages and pages and pages of threat scenarios to go through and look at the mitigations for each one, we've actually cut through all that. We're saying, here's all the TTPs. We can present all the TTPs in a concise way and essentially give you priority actions off the back of it. Now we know the observed, most frequently observed TTPs, um, the most frequently um, used malwares, most frequently seen threat actors targeting us, all of that good stuff. Um, and it allows us as well, because we're aligning it all to MITRE, it allows us to bring down the detection details and highlight causes of action off the back of all of that as well. Um, so we can then do some gap analysis against tooling and so forth. We can say, well, you know, we, we're aware of these uh, attacks that are going on. We're aware that these TTPs are being used in the last six months. We're, we're aware of everything that's going on. And actually, we now know that, you know, we have these top five log sources or data sources that we need to make sure that we've got going into our tooling. And if we don't have those going into our tooling, can we detect some of these behaviours that the threat actors are conducting and using? And if we don't, it's a matter of, well, why not? Is it because the tool is limited itself? Is it because we just don't have those sources coming in? Or is it a bit of both and we actually need to do some work around that?
So having talked about uh, the threats uh, and, and bringing it all together, you get a nice big heat map, which is essentially what we were showing on the MITRE matrix. You have it in a traffic light system. You, you have all those threat levels, you read TTPs or your priority, and you can start to work through. But it just means the whole model itself is just easier to consume. You've got those action points. You've got the top five TTPs, malwares, threats, well, as I've said before. Um, so it, it just makes life a little bit easier.